you can already tell that things are going to start off a little different uh, this evening. Uh, Rob and, and April, the family, is still hanging out at home trying to get their family clear. And so you continue to pray for them. And uh, I want you to go ahead and get your Bible ready. Uh, get all the distractions set aside. Uh, make sure that you're ready to, to really focus in. We're going to get right into God's word tonight. And uh, if you want to go ahead and turn in your Bibles, you can, because I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes. Uh, just make sure people have a chance to sit down. I want to make a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, something that's uh, happening this Sunday, uh, this Sunday morning in our 1015 live. Uh, we're going to have uh, the Spensas here with us. They're going to be a part of our morning service. Uh, in fact, Brother Keith is going to be bringing uh, God's word to us. And that's going to be a great encouragement for us. And he's going to share with us what's happening in the ministry in Uganda. Uh, we'll even have a, a promotional video that's going to play sometime during the service. And the service is going to be condensed just a little bit so that we can stop and have uh, kind of an intermission at the end. And uh, we'll give you like a 10-minute go run to the restroom, come back to your sofa so we can do a question-answer time. Usually we have our missionaries stand in the foyer and they uh, enjoy conversation with us. So what I'm going to try to do instead is have a question-answer time where I ask him questions, he gives us the answers. And so between now and Saturday, if you would send me a question you have for a missionary in Uganda, uh, then you email that to me at info at journeypd.com. Info at journeypd.com. Make sure you send that to me so that I can ask the questions you want, not just the questions I want. And so I'm sure that everybody has some questions uh, about what's going on there. And then uh, Sunday night, instead of our, all right, let me back up, we have our 4 o'clock Zoom Bible study. If you have not signed up for that and you want to be a part of that, now's the time. So same email address, send uh, your, your desire to be in that uh, Bible study to info at journeypd.com. Uh, because you send me the email, I'll have the email to send you the invite. You can't just join. It's not a live stream. It's a, it's a private video chat about God's word. And so you'll have to send me that. So I'll know to send you the, the invitation. And then that'll go till 5 o'clock. Well, at 6 o'clock, we're going to be here in the north parking lot for uh, drive through prayer. That was a really cool thing last time we did it. I don't think it's going to be cool this time. I think it's <laughs> going to be a very warm thing. So don't leave us standing out there in the heat by ourselves. Pastor Jerry's going to be here. I'm going to be here. Uh, we would love to pray with you in person. And so we're asking you to come into the north parking lot. We'll have it coned off. You'll kind of know how to get to where you belong. And uh, it's going to be a great thing. If you didn't participate last time, you missed out. You don't want to miss out again. If you did participate, then you know exactly what we did uh, that night. It's a great time. We get to laugh and encourage each other for a couple of minutes, each car, and we just kind of keep the, the cars moving through. Uh, if a line forms and then there's a gap and you want to come back through, you can come back through. There's no limit to the amount of times you can come through, and so we can enjoy that fellowship. Well, something that's happening very soon, and I want to make sure you have the information, and I want to make sure we have a way of giving it to you. Uh, we are getting ready to restart the church. Before I say anything about dates, I want to make sure you've received the first e email with the reopening plan. We want to make sure that everybody has the details. We want to make sure that everyone knows what's going on. We want you to also know that it's not a, whoever gets here first gets to go to church. Uh, we need you to understand that there's going to be some policy in place. Uh, I'm working with Solomon on some, some ideas on how we can, quote, unquote, and I hate to use this word, reserve seating, uh, because we have only a limited capacity here at the church. Uh, and we'll want to make sure you know the regulations for participation, uh, who should come and who shouldn't. I'm going to start posting some videos on all, all of our platforms uh, so that you can uh, log in somewhere and find a video that encourages you uh, what to expect. Uh, we're going we're gonna to need some extreme, extreme flexibility and understanding in the opening weeks so that we can set a precedent uh, uh, for doing things well so that we can continue to have our, our services and expand them. That's what our goal is, to expand those services. And so I just wanted to give you those pieces of information. So if you'll email me at info at journeypd.com if you did not receive it. Uh, again, every single thing I ask you to let me know something is always to the same email, info at journeypd.com. 
If you don't do email, then call the church number 760-345-8505. And that's on our, on our slides as they run, 760-345-8505. We want to make sure you can communicate with us what you'd like to be involved in, what you'd like to have information on, and we want to make sure we can get that into your hands. Wow. What a, a large <laughs> amount of announcements. I hope that you're willing to participate in all of those things. And now we got to turn our attention to God's Word. And so I told you already, go ahead and get your Bible ready. Psalm 91, really great psalm. I don't even know if we're going to be able to finish it tonight because I'm going to watch the clock. Um, well, there's a lot to go over in Psalm 91. Yep. I know it was my go-to verse when uh, a couple of months ago this whole pandemic thing started. Yep. It's just one of those go-to Bible verses for comfort. So if we don't finish tonight... We can finish next week. We, we can finish it next week if we're so inclined. Sure. And so, so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to kind of get the conversation started. So we want you to engage kind of, I realize we can't hear you. We're hoping we're going to ask the questions and then we're going to answer the questions that you might have. And so many people really claim to rely on, on the Lord, but really only a select uh, amount of people or a select group actually does rely on the Lord. Uh, Solomon, what are some of the things that, that we might rely on and instead, of, instead of God? Things, methods uh, that we might turn to instead? You know, the praises of men always feel good because those are, you know, you get those right away. Uh, maybe uh, some promotion, you know, being promoted, elevated, whatever the case is. Power is always something that people want to grab for. And, and I know this is something that, um, you know, uh, uh, we always want to, uh, uh, I guess, receive is, you know, pleasure. You know, uh, we, we want to feel good. And so we tend to be geared towards those things or steer towards those things that give us that instant gratification. Well, that's definitely true. See, they, they and what's sad is they may not actually be protecting us. They may only be temporarily insulating us. They basically create a buffer between us and the problem that hasn't gone away sure. uh, because our personal abilities or our own power is never enough to get us where God wants us to be. Truth. And so, so let me ask you this. Why might we be tempted to rely on other things even when we know what God says he'll do? Well, I mean, there's a comfortability factor. I'm comfortable in what I'm doing. I like my bubble. I don't want to be taken out of my bubble. It's convenient. Everybody loves convenience, right? Uh, I don't want to be inconvenienced. I want to be convenienced. And something that I struggle with the most, and that is control. I want to <laughs> control everything. I don't want anybody else in charge yeah. of me. Well, I got to tell you this. I've never been accused of micromanaging anything. Uh, and I know that everybody out there that's ever worked with me or is working with me now is laughing out loud sure. uh, because I have a tendency to want to control it all because I'm afraid that if I let go and let God be in control of it, he might not do what I want him to do. And so that's always a problem, isn't <laughs> that's it? That's a big problem. <laughs> and so, so I'm always amazed at the startling difference between true trust and stated trust. There's a significant difference between actually trusting mm -hmm. and saying I'm trusting. Those are very different things. I mean, think about it. genuine trust can and usually will be seen in between jobs. Right. Uh, and so genuine uh, trust tends to be seen in the midst of trouble as and, and on through it. Uh, it. Also, it tends to be seen uh, when the answer is no. Think mm. about that. We hate the word no. We love to get what we always want. And so think about this. Uh, when our hoped for wasn't meant to be is when trust has to be there. Mm. Uh, because if we can't have what we thought we were going to have or we run wild because we didn't get it, uh, that's a big problem. That doesn't share, uh, show trust. And so instead of kicking down doors, think about that. A lot of times we'll kick down doors that God has closed or we'll try to. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and so... Uh, or, or we'll run to something else uh, instead of remaining in the thing that God has us in until we get to see him work. It's, it's learning. Trust is it actually uses or requires a little bit of waiting. Mm -hmm. And that's very difficult at times. And in Psalm 91, uh, we get a sense of true reliance on the Lord. Uh, uh, before things get better, when uh, we still can't see really how they can get better. Isn't that one of the biggest difficulties that, that we know that it could get better, but we can't see how. And so let me read through Psalm 91. It's a lot of verses. It's 16 verses. Let me read through the whole thing. 
and then we'll pray, and then we'll really, we'll really dive in. And so starting with verse number one in Psalm 91, he says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom will I trust. Surely he shall deliver from, uh, thee from uh, the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Uh, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence uh, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and, and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Uh, that, that, these, are, these are just some powerful verses. They actually are very appropriate uh, for the time we're in. He keeps going. He says, um, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Uh, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Uh, thou shalt uh, tread upon the lion and adder and young lion and the dragon uh, shalt thou trample under feet, uh, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer. Answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him uh, and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a set of verses. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us break it down. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity we have before us in Psalm 91. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would give us uh, just a great deal of insight an inspiration from you as we travel through this, that we would highlight the things uh, that are most important and that we would, uh, Lord, share and, and answer questions uh, that might be on the, on the hearts and lips of each person watching this broadcast right now. Lord, I pray that you would be in it, that your spirit would guide, that we would be filled with your spirit, that we would yield to you, Lord, in a special way. Use this time to build your body, your believers, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so, so let's just kind of <laughs> jump in here with this thought. Uh, many of the psalms that we look at have titles and things like that. This one doesn't come with any heading. It comes with no title, no occasion, no author, uh, leaving it open to any situation that we might actually find ourselves in. I really love it when that happens because it doesn't pinpoint one specific thing and have us think, well, mine probably doesn't qualify in this particular uh, circumstance. But it's obvious that a situation or a real circumstance came about that could not be overcome in just any old way. It was going to require the Lord's intervention. Mm -hmm. and, and so God inspires the psalmist to write this down for us so that we can see just how he saw God working in his life. And so, so listen, do you ever take note of his moments, Solomon. When God does a work in you or does something amazing, uh, do you ever jot down those moments anywhere? You know, I, I, do, ha I do have a journal um, where I do my devotions at home and, and, and jot down those, those moments, the, the prayer requests that come with those moments, um, but I like to share them as well. Um, it's real nice. good to get on the phone or text message and, and just share uh, uh, what God is doing or what God has done in my life. It's really neat to be able to be able to pinpoint the day and the hour when God either spoke the answer and you watched it come through, or you actually were given the the actual deliverance that you were praying for, right. the answer to the request. And, and, and listen, it's really important that we don't fill a book full of moments that we did what we thought was best. And it's important that our book doesn't get filled in with uh, the the things that are easily explained within my own strength, this, this place that we would jot this down could only have the moments when it's unexplainably God or it's, it's remarkably God working right. uh, or, and orchestrating while we are patiently waiting. 
uh, this last Sunday, I talked about the circumstances in Jonathan and his armor bearer. And I got to tell you, those circumstances were remarkable and unexplainable. Right. There's just no way that that could happen on its own. And that's kind of the thing we're talking about here in Psalm 91. And so here's where, what our psalmist wanted us to, to remember, wanted to be remembered. Number one, uh, in the first couple of verses here, God is my protector. Amen. God is my protector. And in the, in the, the, the first thing that's revealed uh, seem to be universal concerns. Uh, what people are most concerned about in any age. They're, they're, I want to call them common. And so, so since I've put that out there that way, Solomon, what are, what are the uh, most people concerned about? I, I think, you know, safety is a big issue, especially, you know, right now, the, the safety, not only physical, but the, the health of, of, uh, of, of our people. Uh, protection, you know, we want to feel protected. Um, and personal security, we want maybe a, a large bank account because, I, you know, I have more personal security <laughs> In, in money, um, but that's not where the psalmist is going here. No, he wasn't really concerned about these things, not because he had his own personal arsenal or his bank account was full or anything like that. It was because of the Lord. And what I want to do is I want to take a minute here and just describe something to you. If you look at verses 1 and 2, you're going to notice something really specific. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High uh, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And so he repeatedly says some things, and he uses four distinct words to describe God. And so he uses four words to describe a protector. Uh, uh, Elion, which is one that we, we might be more familiar with, is, is uh, the supreme or the most high. And so then we've got Shaddai, mm. uh, which is a very familiar one because we know that phrase El Shaddai. Yes. Well, we got that means Almighty, the Almighty. And then we've got Jehovah or Jehovah, uh, which is the self-existent or eternal one, mm. uh, which is really the Jewish national and very highly regarded name for God or of God. And then we got Elohim. Uh, which is the exceeding superior, which is the word God, exceedingly superior, not just a little better, exceedingly superior. Mm -hmm. And so, so Solomon, why, why do you think he uses four different terms to describe the one he has confidence and trust based on? Well, n knowing that some of our concerns are safety, protection, uh, security, etc., I would want the most high God, the supreme God, the almighty God, those attributes to be the one protecting me. Yeah. Uh, there, there's nothing more comforting, listen, than to know that you have with you the highest, supreme, almighty, exceedingly God uh, on your side. I mean, th let's just be honest right. here. You want, you don't want second best you don't want third best you want number one you don't want him to just barely be number one right. on his best day you right. want him to be number one on his worst day right. uh, think about this uh, there are passages that talk about the foolishness of God is wiser mm. than the wisdom of man correct and so we want the one that on his most foolish day is way wiser than we are right. if you could ever use the word foolish to describe the Lord. And so I think that was meant to be understood kind of facetiously or, sure. or sarcastically. But notice the specific types of protection. Now we go back through the verses and we look at the protection. And so in verse number one, we, uh, uh, we, we see this, this what place, this, this location, the hiding place. Well, mm. this secret place or this hiding place is really like a secret hideout or a covering that kind of, it's almost like camouflage, uh, if you will. And so it's like having your own personal ghillie suit of the Lord, you know, <laughs> you, you kind of hide out in him. And then, they, well, then we have this other kind of hiding place. It's called the shadow, uh, shade or defensive shelter. Uh, think about this. If you are uh, in a slightly dim room, maybe you've had somebody jump out and scare you because they were in the shadow. Well, imagine having uh, your enemy walk right by you and not even know notice you're there because you're hiding in the shade of the Lord. Mm. You're being protected from the, the burning hot sun because of the Lord right. or something of that na nature. And then we have this refuge, which is my shelter, my hope, my trust. It's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's really giving us the next, we're kind of going towards the next word, which is fortress, which is like a castle or a strong tower right. uh, or a strong hold. Uh, so imagine that. Uh, he gives us all these different words. What seems to be the purpose of such a multifaceted or specifically detailed description of our kind of protection? 
you know, I, I just think with those descriptions, we can have comfort and rest in the fact that there is full coverage, if you will, uh, from the Lord. No matter where we are, the situation, the circumstance, the timing, there's full coverage from the Lord. Amen. So we have these four, four different ways to refer to God to give us a, a more complete picture of God. And then we get to see a more complete picture of the kind of protection he's mm. actually offering those who will do things his way. And so, so why is it so important for us to know uh, with such detail? Uh, Solomon, if you want to add to that, why is it so important to know all this detail? I mean, you know, we, we live by faith, right, and, and not by sight. And, and I can't see God's hedge of protection. I can't see his shadow, but I know it's there. And so when we read this psalm and we read what God is offering to us, uh, it just helps to bring everything into perspective. It almost like gives us a mental picture right. of what that protection could be like. Because remember, we have a multifaceted situation that we live in. Mm -hmm. And so difficulty comes from multiple different directions, as we'll continue to study tonight. Uh, but it's so helpful uh, when we're dealing with what we cannot see in the future. Uh, it's a confidence booster when we're facing circumstances that require actually walking by faith. In fact, Hebrews 11.1 1 describes faith for us in this way. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. When we're hoping for something, it hasn't happened yet. So it's the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not a word we describe for something that we already have. It's not, a, it's not something that we uh, can actually put our hands on already. It's something we've been told is going to end up in our hands at some point. Uh, it's something that we're going to be landing on. It's like uh, being in one of those, uh, those trust circles or doing one of those trust falls, right. and you hope the person that is behind you that's going to catch you is actually going to For me, fall. it's making sure the airplane's going to land safely. Yes, right. th there you go. That's right. also true. Uh, so <laughs> So, so we're able to keep moving into darkness, into the darkness of our circumstances because it's not based on sight, uh, because it's based on what God can do, not what we've already, we're already seeing happen from our own strength. And so that was number one. Now let's move into the next section of it, which is the largest segment of it, verses 3 through 13. God is my deliverer. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. You need the first two verses to really comprehend how it can happen mm -hmm. in the next ones. Not only uh, do we have multiple words to describe the protector and the type of protection, now we have, uh, we move, he moves into, on to reveal the process of protection. So what is the first word the psalmist uses to describe the process in verse number three, Solomon? Deliver. Deliver. Yep. Powerful word, that word deliver. What is the implication made by the word deliver? Uh, there's, a, there's a timing behind it. Okay. Now think about this. Solomon didn't tell you, uh, but we're not kept from difficulty and trouble. Maybe he wanted me to be the one that was bearer of bad tidings. <laughs> uh, 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 we will experience hard times yep. and times that cause fear. We're going to experience those things. You can't be delivered from something unless you're first in it. And so he doesn't take us out of the troubles in this world. He is helping us through them or out of them. And so the word deliver means to snatch away without fail. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a powerful statement? So he says, uh, as a surely he shall deliver, snatch away without fail. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so he gives us that word. That leads us into several realities that people face. Uh, notice two specific things we have to hold on to in just verse, or, or we have no, hold, I should say, no hold on us in verse number three. These things have no hold on us, and the first word is snares. If you'll notice, there it says, it says, surely he will deliver us the, the from the snare, okay? Now, it goes on to give other descriptions of it, but the snare, okay? So a snare is a trap set for us by an enemy. It's like a sheet over a pit or a spring net. Maybe you've seen one of those movies where someone hits the spring net, and they get strung up in the trees, or they get a loop around their ankle and hanging in the tree. That, that's the kind of Im image that he wants us to have there because it's a hunter using a trap that's been set. Then we have pestilence, pestilences. Ready for this? This is plagues or pandemics could actually be put in that phrasing there. Noisome is the word describing them, and that noisome doesn't mean simply loud. It means sudden mm -hmm. and loud. I mean, it just roars right in out of nowhere. What's the difference between the two things, though? 
uh, snares are, are, are set by men. There's, there's an intention when you set a snare. You, you, you intend to trap something or somebody. Uh, with the pestilence, um, it's naturally occurring. Uh, it, it comes on naturally. It's just something that happens. Yeah. And so one is personal, meaning that's an attack of an enemy, right. or the enemy personally attacking you. And the other one is not personal. Uh, we have a lot of struggles that come into our lives that are completely not personal. We might take them personally, right. um, but they're not meant to be personal. Uh, they're, they're actually happening to a lot of people around us at the same time oftentimes. So how should that comfort us? Well, I mean, the comfort here in verse 3 is that um, no matter what we're going through, whether it is a snare, whether it is a, a, a pestilence, that God is with us in, in all those circumstances, no matter if they're made by man or if they're just naturally occurring. That whole word deliver coming back in there. Right. He's going to deliver us. He's going to snatch us away without fail. Now, he's not going to snatch us away until he's ready to. But, right. but isn't that comforting to know that God has us no matter what? So let's keep moving. Notice the purposeful simplicity of his protection. It, 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 he's simple on purpose in the way he describes his protection in verse number four. Uh, notice just a couple of phrases that he uses here. He hides us in him with great care. So, so, so notice the verse. It says, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou, tr shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Mm. This is a powerful, uh, a powerful verse. The psalmist notes two different ways God might, may employ to provide the protection that we're going to need. So he says the first one is cover thee with his feathers. Now, now let's be honest here. It's like a screened by the wing kind of idea. Uh, we think of, uh, when we think of this, it's almost like a, a mother hen mm, takes the, yes. the, 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 the chicks and, and covers them in the wing and puts a cur cur uh, just kind of a curtain around them. And, and, and then, then we see this, by thy shield and, and be thy shield and buckler, it's a surrounding shield. It's not just a shield in front of us. It's actually a shieldedness that goes all the way around us. Now, now there's an implication again here. What is the implication of these types of protection? Well, uh, the implication is that it, to get that, it would seem that somebody, God, needs to be very close to you to provide that. Now, his hand yeah. is far-reaching, yeah. but he's here with us. It, it, so, so it's basically... It's up close and personal, right, really. Right. And so why is that helpful to know? Well, because, you know, no matter what we're going uh, through, it, it is nice to know that um, no matter how big we think it is, in our little bubble, God is with us. Yeah. And so I think it makes it, it helps us understand that, that, that God is more intimately aware of the individualized problems. Right. Even though we might think of life as just a big board game with a lot of impersonal pieces on it, and he's just moving pieces around right. uh, at, 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 at a whim, that's never how God is doing it. He's trying to be very descriptive here so we would understand how deeply personal uh, this is. And so he's got this deeply personal protection, and it's helpful to know that, that he's right there close to us. And, and I think that the next few verses will help us know exactly why. Okay, so notice uh, what we shouldn't have to fear in verses 5 and 6. He says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor uh, for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence uh, that, walketh, uh, that, that walketh in darkness, nor uh, for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And so we got these two verses, a lot of words there. Uh, with God on our side, uh, we can sleep at night, knowing that even the things that, that come suddenly or without a warning, like terrors in the night or arrows in the day, that's verse number five, and going on to verse number six, illnesses or destructions that they never catch God unaware. Uh, so with all this said, what can we do in response considering when these usually come? What can we do in response? Well, rest in the Lord uh, is, is the first one we can do. I don't know about you, but the most sleepless nights I have is when I'm worrying about something, when I'm not resting yep. in the Lord. Um, and, and then it, it all goes back to trust, trusting in God. Yep. We need to learn how to trust the Lord. Uh, no matter what right. we see, uh, no matter what we're experiencing, 
God's promises are more real than the experiences that we're in, involved in. Right. And he has more control than we can imagine him having. That's why the psalmist is being so detailed. In fact, Proverbs 3 Verses 23 and 24 says this. It says, Then shalt thou walk, uh, shall walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. Uh, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. When we learn how to trust the Lord, when we really set the things that we're going through at his feet and go to bed knowing that even if arrows are flying at night, think about this. Uh, we might wake up in the morning and find out that something that happened just before we went to bed has been talked about all over social media right. all night long and has been blown out of proportion and turned into this nightmare. Well, we can sleep at night knowing that even if that does happen, that the Lord can still rescue us. The Lord has still got it. We just need to trust him that he's working all of that out. When we get this, we tend to sleep a lot better. Now, do you ever have trouble sleeping at night? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Often. Often. Now, we're not talking about drinking too many uh, energy drinks or coffee right. uh, or being prescribed a medication that has a side effect of sleeplessness. I'm talking about stress or worry caused sleep loss. Right. When was the last, last time you got a good night's sleep? I, I, I hate to say this, but it was last night. But that's <laughs> only because I didn't sleep for the previous two nights. <laughs> okay. So, so you've experienced some sleepless nights, really concerned about what the plan of the Lord was or sure. really how the work is going, how it, th things are being affected in your, your home and right. things like that. And I'm imagining there's a lot of people that are struggling right now not knowing what's going on. Well, God is helping us. If you want to get good rest, spend some quality time with him. Right. And then obey the things you learn so that you can enjoy a little more rest. And, and sometimes it also requires a little bit of breaking a pattern of sleeplessness. Yes. Uh, we are habitual people. We, we tend to set ourselves into bad patterns. And, and, and sleeplessness that is not related to energy drinks, coffee, or medications uh, is generally caused by uh, a breach in our trust and what the Lord is preparing to do or doing, right. or he's asked us to stay awake and spend time with him. I mean, I, wanted, mm -hmm. I don't want to take that away from the Lord. Sometimes he causes sleeplessness so that we'll call out to him yes. and we'll turn to him uh, for a period of time. And so you might be in one of those periods right now where he's actually had you stay awake and spend time with him because he wants to guide your steps. And so so notice the, the, the the effort or notice the results of our enemy's efforts against us in verses seven and eight. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I love this passage. Only with thine eyes uh, shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So think about this. When we trust the Lord, when we walk in obedience to his word, our enemies will suffer great losses instead of us. They may have it planned out how they're going to take care of us and how we're going to get what's coming to us in their minds. But those who do not trust in God are the ones who suffer the loss. So how urgent does it seem that we trust the Lord? Extremely urgent. <laughs> So, so what's on the line if we don't? Uh, a greater loss. And, and, and I don't think the psalmist was implicating a loss of life, but we may be losing a blessing. We may be losing that, that protection, that peace, that safety that God readily has available for us, but we're not in a position to receive it. Very true. See, it appears that the, the greater we trust the Lord, the greater the life issues we commit to the Lord's guidance the more peace and rest that is actually available to right. us. I don't know about you, but I can't spare any of the peace and rest I already have, <laughs> no. and I could actually use more. And so this has really been an encouragement to us to consider how we might uh, continue to learn to trust the Lord more. The, the next several verses, though, uh, verses 9 through 13, the psalmist repeats the amazing reality that awaits those who trust him. Now, uh, I just want to kind of over kind of do an overview here. Uh, the nature of God's protection, needing no help from us uh, other than total faith that, that he can do and will do what he's promised. Did you catch that? Uh, we need to put more faith in the nature of God's protection and realize that he doesn't need uh, any help from us. Now, he needs obedience from us, but he doesn't need our help in making him able. Uh, what does he say will happen to those who trust in him? In verses 7 and 8. 
Or, yeah, verses 9 through 13, I should say. You know, I, I love verse 11. You know, he will give his angels charge over thee. And, and what a comforting verse that is, that, that, that the angels that, 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 that cry out to God in heaven are, are given charge over me. Yes. And, and I just love that verse there. Well, think about this. No matter what the power of the enemy is, we can have victory. Uh, think about this. What, what do we forfeit when we trust in any other thing besides him? What do we forfeit? I mean, we forfeit the, the, the God-sized victory. There's only right. so much we can do in our flesh. Yeah. We forfeit what God can do being God. And I got to tell you, I love God-sized victory. Amen. Um, I'll settle at times, unfortunately, for my size victory. Mm. But I actually am, am, I think we all should be uh, rightfully more impressed with a God-sized victory. And so, so much... We, we have so much less when we don't trust the Lord right. than we could have. And we don't want to find ourselves in that position that we have forfeited what we could have. You know, just a, just a side note, a piece of information, this passage that we just came through where it says he'll give his angels charge over thee is what Satan twisted yes. out of context to tempt Jesus uh, uh, into testing God. It was one of the three temptations. So why do you think this was one of the three temptations of Jesus? You know, it, it, looking back at that verse in, in Matthew 4, um, it's a temptation that I think we are all tempted with at times. In other words, Satan was saying to Jesus, hey, if God is who he says he is, why don't you That's test right. him and, and see if he, he's yeah. going to do what he says he's going to do? And, and we often face that in our own walks. Hey, God, if you are who you say you are, why aren't you showing up and doing what you promised me you're going to do? Yeah. And sometimes we often level a challenge to God. If you don't do this, sure. then I'm going to stop this. Sure. And so we, when we do that, we are way out of line. In fact, Jesus, instead of, instead of falling for the, the temptation in Deuteronomy 6.16, that's what he points him back to. He says, no, no, it says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy Correct. God. We're not supposed to be telling God, this is what you're going to do or else, or Correct. if you don't do what I tell you to, I'm going to do this. And because you didn't do what I think is best, I'm not going to follow you anymore. Right. Uh, that's not where we're supposed to be at. We're supposed to be uh, winning that temptation to test God or to, or to put God, in, so to speak, in his place if he doesn't do what we think he ought to do. And, and so, listen, we can trust God to protect us. That's just the bottom line. Uh, but not for the purpose of testing him. Uh, he helps us accomplish his will and protects us along the way Amen. from anything we encounter that's by his design. Remember that when we're walking in faith and obedience, we're walking into the things he's designed for us. Mm -hmm. And his protection is ready to, to, to be there for us when we're walking by his word in his will. It's a, it's a pretty amazing thing. Now, now let, let, let's go ahead and finish it tonight. I think we're just going to have to go a few minutes longer. Notice one last comforting reality, the third point, and it's verses 14 through 16. God is my rescuer. Mm. And so let me just read out the chapter, and then we'll talk about it a little bit, Solomon. Uh, verse 14, it says, Because he hath set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. Make sure you understand that this is told in a reverse fashion. Right. Okay? God is saying, because he hath set his love upon me, meaning we put our love on God, uh, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. God speaking, you know, we're looking towards the Lord. Verse number 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So those last three verses is like God's testimony time. Right. Notice only what is said, only what is said, but not only what is said, but but how it's said in these remaining few verses. What does God, uh, what does God do, or, or how do I put this? How does God actually say he's going to do these things? Well, he, he said... who's he going to do it to? Well, he's going to do it for those that, that have set his, his, their love upon him, yep. that, that know his name. Um, there's, some, there's some intimacy in there. We know God is love, but our love towards God is causing God to do these things for us. And remember, when we love God, we do things a certain way. Right. In fact, the Bible tells us that when we, the, 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 the people that actually love God are the ones that are doing what God's word says to do. Right. 
And so uh, the believer loves God. Our, our, our trust in God is a demonstration of our love for him. And our love for him is proven by our obedience right. to, the, to, to what he says. Uh, too many say they love God, but are actually just want, wanting something from him. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that? That a lot of people get really serious about the Lord when they need something. Right. But they're not so serious about the Lord once they have it. Right. Uh, uh, maybe, the, maybe you've heard those people uh, bargaining with God for riches. I'll give you 90%. I'll give you 90%. And as it starts to come, like it looks like it's coming in, that percentage goes way back <laughs> down. Uh, because we like it that way. What are some of the ways we do this? What are some of the ways that we, we, we put our trust in our or we put we actually come to the Lord and we want something I should say well we 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 pray for something you know you mentioned we, we sort of barter with God hey give me a little and I'll give you a little um, we go to church to get something um, we're giving hoping for something or we're, we're yeah. tithing hey Lord I put 10 bucks in the offering plate you know you're gonna multiply it open up yep. your heavens doors yeah. yeah isn't that crazy how we do that we, we can get so focused on uh, what God has to do right instead of what our love for him opens him wide mm, to do right uh, we have it all wrong many times we we oftentimes put god in that position of well you have to do this this is your responsibility god and that very attitude reflect doesn't reflect love right that reflects some sort of a control over him right and, and i gotta tell you when we control god who's god we are. We are God. Isn't that right. a crazy thing? Uh, does there seem to be an order of things that makes a difference, though? Well, you know, I, 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 I take that question, and I, and I always go back to Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto thee. You seek the kingdom of God, and you seek his righteousness because the order, as we pick up in verse 14 of Psalm 91, is because we've set our love on him. Definitely. See, if we, uh, our love for him is, is needs to be as if we believe he's actually God. Right. I think that that's the, the hardest part is that when we think of God in terms of human relationships, well, then sometimes we feel like people owe us something. Right. But when we remember who he is, he is God, and he has made everything possible for us. That should generate a love for him. So when we love him when he, as if he's actually God, he responds to our love for him. Yes. Remember, he's already loved us in sending Jesus to be the Savior of the world. It's right. by his love that he, demonstra he already demonstrated it. Right. And so what he's asking us to do is love him in return, and then he can further demonstrate his love for right. us. And that's when the blessings start to kick in. That's when the protections kick in. Right. That's when the deliverances kick in for all the things that we've talked right. about uh, tonight. And so one thing that we need to do is if we wrap this up, we need to remember that these last three verses and this entire psalm was inspired by God and is the very word of God. Amen. We should experience rest in him when we actually love him, obey him, and trust him. Amen. And so it's going to take all of that. And so what I want to do right now is just have a word of prayer, and then we're just going to kind of and close it out right there, maybe with a couple of reminders. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for Psalm 91 tonight. Such an encouragement. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity I've had with Solomon to, to bounce some of these verses around a little bit. And I pray that each person listening to this, whether they listen tonight live or if they listen to it tomorrow or the next day, that they'll be encouraged by what they hear from your word. Lord, that they would recognize that true faith in you will inspire trust, it will inspire love, and it will cause us to experience your protection, your peace. It will cause us to experience, uh, through the process of time, deliverance as we travel the path that you have laid out for us. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as we uh, just kind of close this out, don't forget those things that I mentioned at the front end. We have uh, this coming Sunday morning, we'll have our guest uh, missionary 
uh, from uh, Uganda, the, the Stensas. Uh, they're, they're, it's been four years. They're back on furlough. They're going to present and share with us. They're even going to bring God's word for us. And so I hope that you'll tune in at 1015 this coming Sunday morning. We have our 4 o'clock Zoom Bible study in the book of James. We've only had one week, so you haven't missed a lot. We're going to review a little bit to bring everybody up to speed, and so I hope you'll be able to join us. And then drive through uh, is coming up uh, at 6 o'clock on Sunday night, and I want you to be encouraged to be a part of that. And then, then make sure that you have looked over the email we sent this past week. A new one will be coming out tomorrow. We're going to try to make sure you're up to speed on our reopening plans and even the dates and times. Uh, things are going to change significantly in the next week or so. And so we want to, we want to make sure you are aware of all of that. And so you've got, to, you've got to get a hold of us and make sure that we know. In fact, I'm going to ask the men if they would, as we close out, put the contact information up uh, at this point in time. Thanks for watching tonight, and God bless you.